Excellent. Well, thank you very much, Kim, for, for the introduction and thank you all for joining us. Uh, it's a pleasure to have you all uh, join us for this session. Uh, and really for me, uh, I want to try and keep my uh, comments and my uh, my uh, me speaking to a minimum because we've got, we're joined by uh, four of our uh, fantastic cohort. Uh, so before we um, jump into the uh, into some slides, I thought it'd be very useful for everyone to kind of just briefly introduce themselves. So I'm Dr. Kasim Rafiq. I'm an associate professor in the department and also the program director for uh, this particular program in uh, uh, the manufacture and commercialization of stem cell and gene therapies. So I'll just go in order of who I can see on my screen. So I'm gonna ask Lihi. Lihi, do you wanna just briefly introduce yourself? Yeah, um, I'm Lihi. I'm a current MSc student in the program and I live in London. Fantastic, thank you, Lihi. Uh, Pierre, do you wanna go next? Yep, hi everyone. Uh, my name is Pierre. I'm a student here at the MSc program for cell and gene therapies and I have a background in biomedical sciences. Fantastic. Uh, Charlotte, do you want to go next? Yep. Hi, everyone. I'm Charlotte. Um, I'm from London. I grew up here. I'm still studying here. Um, and my background is the arts and sciences degree at UCL. Fantastic. And Tamara? Hi, everyone. I'm Tamara. And my background is in biochemistry. And I'm an MSc student here. Fantastic. Uh, so uh, we're really delighted to be joined by and I have to thank our students for taking the time out of their busy schedules. And I know for the next couple of months, they are extremely busy with, with various assessments and activities, but delighted that they could join us and, uh, and, and join you all to, to kind of share their experiences about the program. So I'm just about to share my screen. Uh, so Kim, if you could uh, let me know uh, verbally if, if that's showing. Yeah, that's been great. Perfect. Excellent. Uh, so uh, welcome all. Uh, I'm just going to give a brief overview of the program. Um, I think it's always helpful. Some of you, I think, would maybe have seen some of these slides. Uh, some of you, uh, this may be the first time. So I thought it's useful um, to give an overview of the program before handing it over to our students. So um, let me just make sure it's working. So the agenda for today's session is to give an overview of the program uh, and then really at that point to hand it to our uh, current cohort of MSc students. So they'll all be kind of giving some background to themselves and, and their motivations, why they took the program, their current thoughts about it. Uh, and then we wanna have an open Q&A. Um, so feel free to put, you know, start typing your questions in from now, or as, it, as we go through the session, you know, feel free to put in questions. And then certainly we, we wanna dedicate at least 20 to 30 minutes at the end, purely for uh, discussion. I've got questions for our, for our students that I like to get their input in that may be useful for prospective applicants, but also I'm sure many of you will have questions as well. Uh, and then uh, at the end, we'll have a just quick wrap up and then um, Kim can give you a bit more detail about where you can find certain information where you can get the recording afterwards and so on as well. Okay, so just to kickstart with the program and, and why we established the, this program. So I joined UCL in January 2017 um, and I joined as an associate professor with a focus of so the research focus in cell and gene therapy manufacturing. But really for me, as much as I love the research and I love working with companies and, and so on, the, my main passion is teaching. And my main passion is kind of training the next generation of engineers and scientists to lead in this field. And for me, when I joined, I remember speaking to the head of department, Professor Gary Lyon saying, we need to create a new master's program that addresses these issues in this space, because this is going to be a huge sector and it was already you know, developing into a, a large sector. Uh, and that's only increased in the last few years and certainly in the last few months since COVID. Um, there's been a huge amount of investment that's gone in. And what is absolutely the case, and our students can attest to this because they've heard from lots of expert speakers, is that the demand for new graduates and for experts in this field is so high, but the supply is minimal. And therefore there's a ripe opportunity for, you know, some key passionate, enthusiastic um, scientists and engineers to really be leaders in this field. And so it's kind of really a, an emerging opportunity where you can get in pretty much at ground zero and shape the future of this field, which will almost certainly be around for the next 20, 30, 50 years. And, hopefully longer because I think these are curative therapies and, uh, and, uh, and medicines which will for me transform the way we deliver and think about healthcare moving forward. 
It also relates very fundamentally to what we call a clinically pulled high value manufacturing activity. And that's always very important for any economy. So you would have seen in the last few months with COVID, the government's announced huge amounts of investment into uh, a center, for example, in Braintree and Essex for a uh, vaccine. And then in, in the next two years, we'll transition into cell and gene therapy manufacturing, uh, it's particularly for viral vectors and so on. Uh, and there's already a huge amount of investment going into various UK sites around the country for advanced therapeutics. And that's important for the UK economy and for the global economy. Any country wants to have a high value manufacturing activity where you've got skilled individuals, contributes to the local economy, but also improves the national and global health and wealth. And so advanced therapeutics and particularly stem cell and gene therapies are very much at the forefront of that activity. But also there's a significant opportunity for development. And this is where we want the leading scientists and engineers to come together to utilize their underlying expertise, whether that's in biomedical science or the biological sciences, or whether that's in the engineering uh, or in the commercial fields, to really pull together that knowledge and work with other individuals to try and develop some of the solutions to some of the challenges we now face. And that's really highlighted on this slide, where you look at the price of these therapies, and we've got um, each of these therapies have been approved by one or more international regulators, uh, but you look at the prices of them and clearly you could probably buy, I wouldn't say in London, but you could probably buy a house uh, or put down the, certainly a mortgage for uh, a house uh, around the rest of the UK with a single dose for each one of these therapies. So we have Prochymal, a mesenchymal stem cell product, uh, which had a list price of $200,000. Kimraya, a CAR-T product, uh, which is $475,000. Uh, Glybera, over a million. Uh, and Provend, which is over $93,000. Uh, the key thing about this is that these are transformative therapies, but the cost at which they are manufactured and the cost at which they're being supplied to the healthcare agencies is just unsustain is unsustainable. And that's really the focus of how we can reduce the cost of these therapies by improving their manufacture, by thinking about novel uh, business models or pricing strategies to make them more accessible. And ultimately, how can we try and improve global accessibility to these transformative therapies? This was actually highlighted by the Commissioner Gottlieb of the FDA. So this is, uh, or he recently resigned, I think in the last year, but Commissioner Gottlieb of the FDA is kind of the, the most senior person within the US Food and Drug Administration, the US regulator. And in a speech back in uh, May, 2018, uh, to the Alliance of Regenerative Medicine uh, Annual Meeting Board, he highlighted two key things. He highlighted that the greater challenge in cell and gene therapies is around the limitation in manufacturing capability and that there is a need for scalable manufacturing processes. And when you have the regulator, or the, probably the most important or certainly the largest global regulator making these comments that there has to be a focus on manufacturing and developing scalable opportunities, then you know, everyone's ears start to prick up and listen because you know, that, that is you know, a, a key important opportunity for growth and development and addressing the need in this space. This was further highlighted by one of the UK reports in advanced therapies manufacturing uh, and, and there specifically in that report, they highlighted the critical skills shortage. And that's what this program is trying to address. How can we develop uh, and increase the skills pool at a much earlier entry point uh, with master's students or an MSc program that will deliver larger cohorts of motivated, enthusiastic, passionate graduates who are, you know, have the mindset of how can we transform and improve this field moving forward. I'm not going to show you this video, but there's a fantastic video of um, why we do what we do, and I'll make sure um, that the link is made available to you all of just how transformational these therapies are. So this was Emily Whitehead, who uh, had uh, received one of the first CAR-T therapies, and she was effectively uh, on the brink of, uh, of death. Um, she had uh, acute lymphoblastic leukemia. Her, her leukemia, the normal treatment would be bone marrow transplantation. She had a bone marrow transplantation and it failed. Uh, she then had multiple rounds of chemotherapy, which was the next line of treatment, but the cancer kept returning. And effectively she had no other therapeutic option. She was going to die of her disease, but she was enrolled in this at, back in 2010 in this new clinical trial focused on CAR-T and the rest is history in that you know, a few years later, 
she was able to, you know, fit and healthy with no sign of the cancer returning, was able to then meet the, U the US President Barack Obama. And when she met, because she couldn't say where she was going, um, when she met with the President, he asked her, is there anything I can do for you? And she said, yes, you know, my school don't know I'm here. Can you write me a note to let them know I was with you? And so that's the note that Barack Obama wrote saying, please excuse Emily from school, she was with me. But I think it highlights the transformational nature of these therapies. Emily hasn't had to receive another dose and she's effectively cured from the cancer that she was suffering from. And that's the end goal of what we want to try and do is how can we generate and create transformational therapies and manufacture them and deliver them at a cost that the market and customers are willing to, willing to pay and can bear. So that's the aim of the program. Very briefly about the program, I'm gonna show one quick video and then really I'm just gonna go straight to our students. I'm gonna run through a couple of the other slides and then go straight to our students. But I'd like to show you this promotional video that we've created just to give you an overview as to um, what the program involves and introduces some of our steering committee. What excites me about stem cell and gene therapies is the massive potential that it has and the curative aspect of it. So when you look at traditional ways of treating things, you were treating symptoms, whereas now you're looking at this exciting new field that can basically cure you of your disease and then you move on with a normal life. And it just has so many options out there to help so many people. The Masters in the Manufacture and Commercialization of Stem Cell and Gene Therapies is a new one-year program established uh, at UCL in the Department of Biochemical Engineering, which focuses on developing the next generation of engineers, scientists and business professionals to develop, manufacture and commercialize advanced therapies, particularly stem cell and gene therapies. We have a steering committee of industrial expertise that are going to commit time to teach on this program and, and give us their experiences in the industry and how they actually to carry out their roles and what's required of them. So that's going to be invaluable for any student that's looking to get into the industry. And that for me, I've been teaching for 10 years plus in higher education. I've never had that experience. It's a fantastic opportunity for students because we can put in the information that the experts in the industry are, are wanting to impart themselves. This is a unique program which gives students the opportunity to learn about science, engineering, manufacturing and the business side of delivering products to patients. The steering committee is really important because it's comprised both of the academic leaders and also industry experts like myself and together what we're going to do is to craft this course to make sure it's really relevant, the most contemporary knowledge is available to the students. I've been fortunate enough to be in the cell and gene therapy space for quite a long time, starting out as a clinician and then working to develop therapies for patients. And through that time, I've noticed how amazing it is to be able to really make a very big difference in patients' lives. And I'd really like to share that with new people that are coming on to lead the therapies of the future. But more importantly, I want to learn from them because it's only with their ideas that we'll really move this area forward. This is a great opportunity for the UK as a country, but the sector as a whole globally. And it has a specific need for skill right across the, uh, the, the skill set for what is required in the industry. The good thing about this program is that we're not making the students ready for one kind of a job. On the contrary, we'll make the students be aware that they have different opportunities because not only, for example, we're gonna teach them research in the lab, they're gonna be doing cost analysis, commercialization. So when they will finish, they can go to a company and then within the company, they can work in different sectors like legislation, uh, bioprocessing, analytics, preclinical, and even commercialization. And not only that, we're going to make them explore more research. So if they want to go and do a PhD in collaboration with a company, they can do um, an NGD too. There's a massive impact of industry into this degree. So there is a massive connection, which as a master's student, so anyone in academy, that's what you want to have. You want to know where you're going to be working in the future. You want to see what they want, what they need, what, they, what their challenges are, and how you can learn about how to solve them. This program allows us to understand and appreciate all factors which go into manufacturing and developing these advanced therapies. So that includes ethics, regulations, and the initial manufacturing and commercialization. Essentially, optimizing the manufacturing process, keeping in mind all of these factors 
in order to create an advanced therapy for the patient at an affordable price for the healthcare system and for society as a whole. We're looking for students who are proactive and want to make a change. Students that realise we're currently at a tipping point in the global healthcare industry, where we need new therapeutic modalities to address the chronic age-related conditions we're now facing. We want to empower, enhance and enable two types of future complementary leaders scientific and manufacturing leaders and business and technology leaders who can propel this industry moving forward and address some of the key challenges we face in getting these therapies to patients that need them. Okay, so hopefully that's uh, giving you a good overview of the program itself. So really the focus is around generating the, 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 the next generation of leaders within this space. Um, and that's from a, both a technical perspective, uh, a commercial uh, and translational perspective as well. Um, so as I mentioned, we focused on you know the scientific and manufacturing leaders, but also the business and technology leaders as well. And we try and we've developed a program that we think hopefully complements the the commercial aspects as well as the more technical scientific and manufacturing aspects. It's very much industry led. So we have a strong industry steering committee, which I'll introduce in just a second, that help us shape not just the content, but also deliver uh, the content as well and, and are mentoring our students uh, as well. And then finally, producing graduates that are industry ready uh, and also graduates that may be interested in, uh, in doing additional research, particularly industrially focused research. So the program structure, I won't want through this in any detail, and um, this isn't that type of session, but we've it's effectively comprised of six modules. These are all brand new modules. We didn't want to take existing modules because we didn't think they were a good fit. Uh, and we wanted to create content that was brand new, that was specific for what uh, industry felt was critical, but we also felt was important that the students who are going to be graduating from this uh, would need to, to address some of the challenges of the future. So we have uh, a module that I lead, uh, which runs in term one and term two in advanced therapy manufacture, a module uh, that is led by a colleague of mine, Samir Nusebi, but I also am involved in around the commercialization, regulation and ethics of advanced therapies. And we also have uh, uh, another couple of modules which are in the first term focusing on providing that prerequisite knowledge on things like pharmacology. So that's included in the preclinical and clinical analysis and uh, our emerging tools and technologies are kind of the fundamental science of things like um, uh, uh, T cells and CAR T in addition to, to stem cell technologies and also what, what the future holds for kind of emerging therapeutic modalities. And then finally our core practical research skills module and our research project module. So the teaching style is very much, we focus on the traditional teaching approaches. So that's lectures, case studies, tutorials. And, you know, we have, we try and mix it up. So our students would have had pre-recorded lectures this year due to COVID, but then we have uh, live sessions uh, where we go through either uh, actual industry uh, examples or case studies. Uh, and we'll be doing more of that this term as we go into some of the business case studies uh, and, uh, and some of the manufacturing case studies with our industry advisory board as well. But also it's very much focused on real world outcomes and teachings and assessments. So uh, our students, they're getting ready and I say they're busy over the next few months because one of the key assessments they have for one of the modules is presenting to actual Dragon. So they'll be coming up with a, uh, an, a business idea um, focused on perhaps a novel therapeutic or a novel service uh, within the advanced therapy space and then pitching that to actual uh, Dragon. So some of them may be from our industrial steering committee, but we've also invited specific investors who, uh, who do this for a living and who appraise technologies, companies and value companies uh, who will be involved in assessing and, and, and grilling the students in a good way. Um, we've had invited uh, expert speaker sessions where speakers have come not to talk about the science or the, um, the, the technical aspects, but to really give their career stories and their kind of their advice, their input, you know, things that they wish they had done or things that they have done that have helped them and, and so on and so forth. Um, we've had Labster uh, uh, integrated into the program. We had uh, a plan for industry and clinical visits. That's been delayed due to COVID, but it's very much on our agenda for term three. Uh, and we've got uh, two companies lined up at least with a third in the pipeline. We just have to figure out how in a COVID safe manner, we can get 16 of our students uh, to some of the key uh, companies out there. But that's something we're, we're certainly working on for, for term three. And the plan is to, we've just confirmed a date with the industry steering committee about having an industry steering committee dinner with our students. Again, this is all COVID permitting, but we're looking at a date in July where we hope 
post vaccination and, 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 you know, with some warm weather, we've got the opportunity for uh, a face to face uh, catch up and, and opportunities for uh, a dinner. And then finally mentorship. Um, so our students are mentored, and they have mentoring sessions from uh, individuals within our steering committee, and it's all leading to this goal of creating leaders of the future. So I, I realize I've spoken for far too long uh, and I'd like to hand it over to our students just to briefly touch on Labster. I won't go through any of the videos, but we this is a, a virtual learning laboratory environment which we planned prior to COVID and we wanted to integrate and um, we've had to rely on perhaps a little more uh, as a result of COVID um, in light of uh, the, the current situation. Not that this replaces the, the physical lab-based activity, but it provides students with an opportunity to get an understanding of some of the key techniques and we integrate into the program as well. And then finally, I mentioned some of the, the site visits and so on. These are the companies that we're engaged with and that are very keen to host our students. They've all actually accepted. It's just a case of finding a date or finding a time that they can accommodate up to 16 individuals uh, at any one point. So we might have to figure out, you know, maybe doing it in eight in the morning and eight in the afternoon or something, but they're all very keen. And the reason they're very keen is because they want to recruit our students uh, and they've all made that very clear as well. And we also had planned to visit conferences. I'm organizing for our students to attend virtually the Advanced Therapy and Regenerative Medicine Congress, which will be in May this year. That's news to, to our students. I haven't informed them yet, but they'll be attending that. We'll, we'll have the opportunity to attend virtually um, after arrangements and discussions with the conference organizers. We had planned to visit Jaguar Land Rover, and I still would like to um, at no extra cost to our students, but Jaguar Land Rover have postponed all tours uh, until the summer. So that's something we're, we're waiting to hear back from. And then finally, just to introduce our steering committee. Uh, so we have Dr. Zankili, who has recently become the CEO of Antion Biosciences. But just to give you some background with Sven, who chairs up our steering committee, he was formerly the vice president of GSK, where he led uh, their cell and gene therapy division and actually was uh, the primary individual responsible in commercializing Strimvelis, which is uh, one of the first uh, cell and gene therapy products to be approved by the European regulator. And we have a number of other individuals, really kind of people who, are, who have led the field, who have been extensively involved and involved in leading companies as well. So it's kind of the, the, great, the, the great and the good of, of cell and gene therapy across the sector. So with that, I'd like to hand directly to our students. So I think we've got Pierre going first. So Pierre, I'll hand it over to you. Yep, thank you very much, Christine. Uh, so hi, everyone. My name is Pierre, as you know by now, and I'm originally from Belgium. So just to give you a little bit of background uh, about myself, I originally started studying um, two years of medicine before deciding to change and completing um, a undergrad degree in biomedical sciences in the Netherlands in Maastricht. And during that time, I had the chance to play around with uh, mesoangioblasts, uh, which are muscle stem cells. And we were looking at um, how to optimize therapies for patients with muscular dystrophies. And then during the last year of my undergrad, I also had the chance to um, intern at a biotech startup in the Netherlands called Neuroplast that was looking to market a mesenchymal stem cell product for patients with spinal cord injuries. Um, and it was really during that one year, um, I discovered the, the world of biotech, if you will, um, all the innovation behind it and all the different processes that are involved. And that's really where I fell in love with, with this sector. So currently I'm studying the MSc and uh, later on what's next will I envisage to hopefully carry out a PhD or an MGD. Um, I'd be really keen to do it in this department um, and of course staying in the cell and gene therapy sector. Um, and then later on down the line, um, my ultimate aim is to end up in the biotech sector. So working in industry and uh, try and really apply the, the technical and scientific skills that I've learned during my education and applying that to a real world um, scenario in industry. So here I put down five keywords uh, that are really the drivers behind what I, what I look for when I choose what I'm studying and what I'm hoping to, to um, be able to do in my career. Uh, so first medical, I come from, from, from a medical background starting in medicine. So I want to use science and my skills and knowledge to help patients. Um, and improving health. Um, I really like the scientific engineering background, breaking down uh, mechanisms um, into their composite parts, learning how things work, um, and of course, innovation. Um, I really wanna do something that counts, uh, that's gonna have an impact on the world. And, and at the same time, keep that business side because an innovation which you can't commercialize, which you can't get into patients' hands, it is useless. And it goes without saying, 
I liked, I look for things that are very multidisciplinary in nature. And let me tell you this, the cell and gene therapy sector in itself is extremely multidisciplinary and ticks off all of those other keywords. And I think this, this master's course really does a good job at capturing all of those keywords um, in the program. And so why this MSc? Well, it's ultra relevant. It really is real world uh, knowledge uh, that we're learning at the moment. To give you an example, I would listen to a podcast from a biotech CEO talking about a new technology. And then two weeks later in lectures, we would cover it. So it really feels what we're learning is really useful. And the steering committee we have who act as mentors as well um, are really a great addition to the program. Um, it's multidisciplinary, it goes without saying. The course is more or less funnel structured, so we'll start a bit more general uh, with a scientific background to get everyone up to speed. And then once we have the scientific knowledge, we can understand how we can manufacture these therapies. And now we're, me and my colleagues are at the stage where we're learning how can we commercialize um, these therapies. The network opportunities, I came from a university in Europe, I've just arrived here in London, and the network opportunities are fantastic. Um, the staff in, in itself is fantastic and just the steering committee and the, the people that email us asking us for internships and for job interviews, it's really fantastic. It's, 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 it's worth a lot um, at our stage in our careers. And lastly, great team. I mean, the staff are really, they really feels like they care. Uh, they really want us to succeed. And it's fantastic to work with a group of 12 or 15 um, colleagues that are all from very different backgrounds, but all equally motivated and, and like-minded to yourself. Um, and so really for me, this, this course has really delivered on its promises. Um, and I'd be happy to answer any, any questions you may have later on. But for me, it's, it's a lot of positive. Thank you. Thank you very much for that, Pierre. Um, I think next we've got Charlotte. Yeah, um, so hello everyone, I'm Charlotte, um, and I previously studied the Bachelor of Arts and Sciences degree at UCL. So I took a major in Health and Environment and minored in Cultures. Um, and then I also had some previous work experience in marketing, communications and operations at two different startup companies. Um, so I think here my advice would be if you're maybe joining today and you haven't done like your standard science or engineering degree, don't let that put you off from applying or you might think that might kind of come against you at some point. Um, I know that was kind of a concern that I had before starting, um, but I'm really glad that I chose this course um, and I'm kind of doing well so far. So yeah, definitely don't let that put you off. Um, then in terms of why I wanted to choose this program specifically, it's very interdisciplinary. My undergrad degree was very interdisciplinary. I had that mix between like sciences, humanities. Um, so I really find that this course is like the perfect opportunity to learn both about the science and the technical knowledge that's required. Um, but then you get to really mix that with the commercial and regulatory aspects. So as Pierre said, it's really good if you're looking for something that's like more multidisciplinary. Um, it's also a really great course to develop the skills that you'll need um, for the industry. And I think the assessments, they really focus on this. So at the moment, we've recently got started on a technical briefing document. Um, you heard a bit more about the business plan and then we've got the Dragon's Den pitch that's coming up. Um, so yeah, it's, it's great for learning so many different skills that are going to be really important in the future for us. Um, and then we have the industry steering committee. So I think it's great that you've been able to see who we have. Um, and then each time we get a mentor. So having them is so, so valuable. Um, and I think one thing that really, really stood out to me when we met them back in um, October, we had a meet and greet session and just as excited as we all were to meet them, they were so excited to meet us too. Um, so I think that's nice too, just knowing that the employability prospects after you graduate are quite good um, and that there's a whole bunch of people out there who are really excited to meet us and have us working in the industry. Um, then what I've enjoyed about the program so far, I think something that I really like is that it's really fast paced and challenging. Um, but this is in a good way, I made sure I wrote that down. Um, so we're really encouraged to think critically, really go that one step further. Um, and I think it's really rewarding if you complete um, a piece of coursework that maybe is a little bit challenging once you've done it. Um, it's really, really good to feel that you push yourself. And then I think once you graduate, we're all gonna be in a really good position. Um, we'll have a really solid background and understanding with which to apply for either jobs or whether maybe it's a PhD or an NGD that you want to do. Um, there's so much group work involved and you really learn a lot from your peers. So even from like this week, it's our reading week um, and we've been having a lot of meetings for the group projects that we're working on. Um, and you learn so much just from chatting to each other about different topics. Everyone's come into this from kind of a different background. So it's really nice to kind of 
have all those different perspectives um, coming in together and you really see that now while we're working on group projects. Um, in terms of what I'd like to do next and how I feel this program is preparing me, I'd really like to go into the business development or commercial aspects. Um, so, I mean, we have the commercialization, commercialization class this term, which is really great for that. Um, also, maybe I think therapeutic development. So last term we had the preclinical and clinical analysis class, and I really, really love that. Um, so I'm definitely trying to figure out how I can maybe enter that part of the field. And then in addition to all the knowledge and skills that we're gaining, we're also developing a network. Um, so there's plenty of opportunities to do this, whether that's through the industry steering committee, or we also have lots of guest speakers come and speak to us. Um, so what we've had since last time is like every Friday evening, we'll have a guest speaker come and speak to us. And there's plenty of opportunities to ask some questions or follow up with them afterwards. And something that I think is really nice too, um, is we have a network amongst ourselves. So I think over the next few years, it'll be really exciting to see where we all head up, um, end up working in the industry um, and what different paths we all take. Um, so that's good. And I think definitely before starting this program, I didn't really know how to network. Um, I kind of felt that it was maybe something that I couldn't really do very well as a student. I have to be really successful in my field before I could start networking. Um, but definitely this is one of the first things that we covered really, um, developing the network, it's actually not so difficult to do and there's plenty of opportunities to do that on this course um, and then in terms of UCL and the department so I was actually at UCL before um, I absolutely love it here and I can expand on the things that the uni has to offer like whether that's through societies or just the general facilities afterwards in the Q&A if you want to know a bit more um, but I know the website covers that in a lot of detail but it's also a really great location in terms of industry um, so there's lots of companies that are in the space who are based in and around London. Um, and then, as you know, hopefully we'll get to actually have a little site visit, um, COVID permitting. So really good location in terms of industry, but then also in any interest you have outside of academic life. Um, as you know, like London has just plenty to offer. There's a wealth of things to do here. Um, and yeah, I grew up here and was, I really wanted to stay here for my education um, for those reasons. And then as for the department itself, um, so I can't speak in too much detail because I wasn't in the department before, but I know Lee will be able to talk to you about that. Um, but really from what we've gained this year, it's a world leading department um, and there's really, really strong ties to industry. And I think for us, that definitely comes into play with any of the speaker sessions that we have. Um, you can see from the industry steering committee, there's lots and lots of people who are so willing to chat to you and answer questions. And I think something that stood out to me is everyone's just really lovely. Um, even though a lot of our material has been online, there's so many opportunities to talk to people who are really happy to speak to you as well. Um, so yeah, those are the insights that I can give you now, but if you have any questions and you want me to expand on anything afterwards, um, just ask in the Q&A. Fantastic. Thank you very much, Charlotte. Um, so next, I think we have Tamara. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Tamara, and my background is that I graduated with a biochemistry bachelor's from Kingston University. And that was mostly focused on monoclonal antibodies, genetics, bioinformatics. And I actually did my dissertation on something quite irrelevant to this course, um, which was investigating how parasites can cause epilepsy, uh, simply because that's what I was really interested in at the time. And after that, I went on to work at Smith's Detection. And my job there essentially involved working with engineers on devices that can detect chemical explosives and chemical warfare agents for use by the military. Um, so with all that said, you can see how my background seems a bit all over the place, but really it was more a case if, of which I had a bunch of interests and wanted to see what felt right. And I'm glad to have that I got to have that work experience, um, essentially because it made me realise that although I really enjoy industrial scientific project work, I wanted to work somewhere that was more personally meaningful to me, which is specifically medical applications. Um, but that job also did really pique my interest in engineering processes and the application of scientific knowledge to produce products with observable real life benefits. And so the reason that I actually um, joined this course is because it seemed to be a combination of an end goal that I'd be really excited to work on um, and motivated to work on, but at the same time it incorporates the style of work that I like. So I've generally always been more interested in the scientific or technical sides of things. Um, but although coming up with novel ideas and concepts in academia is exciting and noble, it's not, like Pierre said, it's not really what brings the products of those concepts um, to real life patients. Um, and I also felt like um, the general aim of cell and gene therapies 
in, which is to essentially cure diseases rather than treat the symptoms um, should be the approach of future medicine. So I would say the highlights of this course for me would firstly be the fact that it opens you up to more avenues of thinking than I feel you'd get from studying a pure science course. And um, because it's such an interdisciplinary, interdisciplinary field um, that incorporates manufacturing and business, it gives you the chance to see the full picture and how things really work in practice. Um, although I would say, don't be afraid if you don't have, if you do have a mostly scientific or life science background like me, um, then don't be afraid of the manufacturing and business sides of it because it might be a bit daunting at first. I found that I was surprised by how much I actually enjoyed, enjoyed learning about those parts and that whole learning curve in general. And the next highlight I would say is the amount of industry exposure you get. So we are all given a mentor to talk to one-on-one -on -one, and I felt like that was a really eye-opening opportunity for me since I really admired my mentor and I was intrigued to learn about their work and life. And we also have expert speakers from the industry and they regularly come in to talk about their experiences. And I think that's really valuable. And all of that input and insight you get really adds up in terms of forming your understanding of the field and your career choices. And um, the next highlight I'd say is that I think the course is designed to push you out of your comfort zone in the sense that there's no spoon feeding. So what I mean by that is that you'll be very much assessed in your creativity and interpretation of tasks. Um, and that might seem intimidating at first, but I feel like it's really important for personal development. And it's great if you're someone that's interested in push pushing yourself out of your comfort zone and challenging yourself. And I think it's quite impossible to do this course without learning a lot about yourself and where your strengths and weaknesses are. And my next highlight is that the biochemical engineering department and this program provides a really motivating and inspiring environment. So I think when doing this course, if you decide to do it, you'll very much feel how much the lecturers care about the field and how they're personally invested in the future of it. And even the cohort I'm in have all shown a lot of passion and excitement about the field too, which is really um, inspiring and motivating to be around. And lastly, I would say that the program is highly collaborative and engaging even though it's mostly been online this year, um, I think that the assessments are designed to help improve your team working skills and develop a group work ethic, which I think is really important to pre prepare you for the future if you do go into this field. Um, so what are my future plans and how has the course helped me towards them? So firstly, I'm sure that I want to work in the cell gene therapy industry and potentially do a PhD later on if I still want to lean towards the more technical side of things. Um, in terms of a specific job, I like the idea of working as a process development scientist and a conversation with my mentor is actually what helped me come to that idea. Um, however, I'm still not really set on anything. I plan to try a few different areas to see what I'm really suited to in the long run. Um, but even though we're only halfway through the program, I already feel far more aware of the sector and where it's going in order to be able to make more informed decisions about my future career pathways. That's all I have to say, and I'm happy to answer any questions you have. Fantastic, thank you very much, Tamara. Uh, and then finally, uh, we have Lihi. So Lihi, over to you. Yeah, uh, apologies if the dog starts barking, you know, just some house <laughs> situation. Uh, so I come from the department, actually. I have a BSc in the bioprocessing of new medicines, and I was focused on the business and manage and management aspect of things. So I actually covered quite a lot of the materials that we're currently covering. But the nice thing about this is that while during my undergrad, I covered both science and management, I covered more broad perspective of this, whereas now I get to finally put this into the CGT perspective and really kind of like go into where I want to go more and learn a bit more in detail and really apply all this general knowledge that I learned into actual real life scenarios. And an example for real life scenarios, for example, we have an assessment now that is a rolling case study and it's not completely detached from reality. So it's based on real cases. So that's like high level of applicability, which is great. Um, so a little bit more of my background, I have some summer research placement that I've done working with induced pluripotent stem cells. And in terms of work experience, I have quite a lot of work experience behind me. I'm a mature student. I've done some admin data processing, business intelligence, and I have some army service experience. Uh, I also did musical theater degree in the past, but that's for another day. Uh, why I joined the program is that once I finished my undergrad, I knew I wanted to get into the industry, but I wasn't ready. So I wanted to be better equipped to tackle all those challenges that we talk about. And there are many. And the thing about those challenges is that they go all the way from day one, when you think about an idea, all the way to the marketing and post-marketing. And every single stage comes with its own challenges and they connect 
they intertwine. So you have to have an understanding of all of them. So it's not enough to be just like a science expert or a management expert. The nice thing about this degree is that it gives you an overview of all of them. So you can kind of like see how it all works together. And as I said, it's a step towards a career in bringing those treatments to the market, to those who need them. And my colleague said before me, there's the cost issue that it's not worth if it's not coming out of the lab into pe like to people and the commercialization aspect, regulation ethics that was mentioned before. So it's quite a lot of information to take in, but it's great because you learn how to pick up information quickly, you learn how to apply this information quickly and when you need to apply it. So it's kind of like a, a master's degree is not like an undergrad degree. You take a, and you learn a state of mind and you learn uh, methods of doing things in a certain way. And it's kind of like, it's a change, it's a shift from just being taught certain thing. And now it's kind of like, I'm taking it, I'm applying it and I'm finding somewhere, some other things and other places to look for information that can apply into my work. So. How has this program helped me with my next stage? So access to industry leader was talked about a lot before, so I won't go into that too much. Uh, enhancing my ability to speak both languages. Now that's a major thing. As I said, I don't think you can really go into this industry without kind of knowing a little bit about a lot. And it's not just like a jack of all trades, master of none situation. This degree kind of gives you a jack of all trades with the ability to master things as you go along for when you need them. So it sounds scary, it's a lot of work, but it's worth it. And that's what I enjoy the most because I get to choose where I wanna focus my efforts for each one of the assessments because a lot of times we get to choose where we wanna focus on. And now this one is a big sentence, I'm sorry about this. Forming and implementing a quality-based and value-adding approach to tasks and processes. I know it sounds like, like a lot of like big words and stuff, but it actually is true. So quality is in the, basis of everything we do. We always think about the next step. We always think about the bigger picture, how we can implement quality, how we can add value to every single thing we do when we look at the process of developing something, of commercializing, of even writing my work as I go along. So it's something that you, as I said, you change the way you think of things. You, you learn how to become a better and more employable person and, not, and how to add value in everything that you do, whether it will be in academia or in the industry. It's just like, it's a change and it's a shift and it's not just feeding information to you. And working with people from different backgrounds, as you probably noticed so far with my colleagues, people come from different disciplines, different industries and working together is a good representation of what will happen when you come out to the real world. Again, whether in academia or in industry. So. You need to learn how to do it. You need to learn how to be empathetic towards other people's needs and their knowledge and where you can contribute from your own and where you can learn from them. So yeah, there's a lot that comes up with this master's and it's a lot of hard work. And I'm not gonna lie, you are gonna have some days in which you wanna just break down and cry because the amount of work is insane and you feel a bit overwhelmed. But after that, once you achieved certain things and you learn something new and the next task, you're already so quick on your feet and able to pick things up and implement them it's the best feeling and I will finish by saying that I was listening to quite a lot of conferences and conventions and the discussions that were going on there I was sitting there were VPs from different big companies you have Novartis, GSK, massive companies and they were talking about topics that I can easily sit down in a, like a coffee with them and talk to them about so that was that was a great feeling for me so yeah Fantastic. Thank you very much, Lee. And I think that's probably an excellent opportunity to, to end on and, and now move into the discussion. Uh, so I'll stop sharing my screen uh, and we open the floor to your questions. Um, so I know we've had some questions uh, come in, um, but perhaps if I can kick off with um, a question of my own. So you've all kind of touched there on, on things that you've uh, you found useful uh, and, and you've benefited from kind of from where you were, let's say back in September, when you when you first joined the program, um, what do you, for you, what would be the number one big outcome or key takeaway that you found that has really improved your knowledge or understanding about the sector, and has it has it reinforced what you think is important about this sector or the opportunities that this sector has? Uh, maybe let's go in reverse order. So we'll start with uh, Lihi, and then we'll we'll go back round. 
So yeah, I kind of touched on it. It's the ability to put quality and value into every single one of my actions in every single aspect of my life. So that is the biggest thing because we touched on everything from clinical. Now we're doing commercialization. We're looking at manufacturing. For me, this is the biggest thing that this degree is giving me, the ability to look at every one of those aspects and see how I can improve and build a process with that. And it's that, it's just that state of mind. It's very hard to explain, but it's a state of mind that you, you just develop. And now I feel so much more prepared to go into industry and, and lead a team and then and, and, and lead a company and just develop something that can actually work. So state of mind. Sounds good. Uh, Tamara, how about yourself? I would actually say something similar to Leahy in the sense that I feel like with all the things that we've learned about Lean Six Sigma and manufacturing, I can look at things in a way that I'm constantly analyzing to see if there's ways to improve it or to make things more efficient. And that's something I'd never thought about in as much depth before. And I think is a really valuable skill to have. Fantastic. Thank you, Tamara. Uh, Charlotte. Um. I also really agree with what Lee and Tamara have said. I think for me, the main thing, and I'm gonna go with something that isn't so much like very specifically related to course content, but I think a huge thing that I've gained is independence of thought. And that comes to the fact that assessments can be challenging. They encourage, encourage you to think outside of the box. Um, but with that, you definitely gain a lot of independence in your decisions. We've had the choice to kind of choose a general topic that we're gonna to write about for an assessment. Um, there's a lot of time spent on deciding what you're going to include. Um, which can be quite time consuming. But then as a result, I think afterwards you kind of look back and be like, wow, I actually managed to do that. Um, and then with gaining independence of thought, there comes a lot of other things. I think you become more confident in your work in other ways. You notice it come up in other aspects, I think. Excellent. And, uh, and Pierre, we'll, we'll hand, hand it over to you. Yeah, I mean, I agree with everything that, that's been said. And for me, um, what I would also add is what this course has really been uh, giving me is just kind of a bird's eye view of the cell and genes therapy sector. Um, some of you might be familiar with stem cells, other with viruses and the, some of the processes as I was before starting. Um, but the way this course is structured, it, it really, like I said, is like a funnel. We'll start, we'll start general and then progressively we'll go into the nitty and gritty in terms of manufacturing and commercialization. And just from, what has it been, four or five going on to six months now of the course, I can listen, I can sit on, on an industry um, webinar or I can listen to a biotech CEO podcast and I can genuinely follow the conversation. I can genuinely understand what they're referring to. And now it's coming to the point where I, I can have some input as well, some opinions on, on certain processes or certain approaches. And that's what I didn't have five months ago. And just in five months, I can now bring my, my thoughts, my opinions, my beginning of an expertise to some of these questions in industry. And I think that's, that, that shows very clearly in an interview when you're speaking to, to companies later on. And that's the kind of thing they, they really want and that they're actively looking out for. Fantastic. Uh, so we've got a question here from one of our uh, participants uh, around, and, and I'd like to kind of throw it so that whoever wants to answer it can answer it, uh, maybe from different perspectives. So was the assessment breakdown uh, between continuous assessment or coursework versus traditional exams? And, and actually, when you do give your answer, do you prefer traditional exams or do you prefer the continuous assessment or uh, approach? So I don't know who wants to go with that. Um, I can start off. I would say um, we've only had two more traditional exams and then we had two quizzes and they're all done by now um personally i used to hate exams during my undergrad degree um so i was quite happy to know that on this program we'd have like a lot of different kind of assessments um but i think most of our assessments are definitely coursework um and then within that they're very different types of coursework so at the moment we have a technical briefing document we're working on a review paper, there's a business plan, we've got the Dragon's Den pitch coming up. Um, so yeah, we've only really had two kind of main formal exams um, and two quizzes. So yeah, it's, it's a nice variety, I think. Excellent. How have the others found it? Did you all agree with that? Or is that, has it been, would you like more exams? That's maybe a good question well, for me to find out. I um, actually, based on what we spoke about before and based on what Kasim said about the actual degree, an exam is not a good fit for this type of course. This is all about the application. This is all about you expanding your way of thinking and like applying your information. Hence an exam is not really a good representation of what you have learned. And 
it was all about the interpretation of the of the task and how are you going to approach how are you going to pitch this to a client how are you going to pitch this to your technical officer or to other scientists in your team so i'm happy that those are all coursework based i also didn't like exams i'm not a big fan of memorizing i think it's useless nowadays uh with google so yeah, it's taking your knowledge to like a different level. Now you really need to make sure that you're understanding the material because otherwise you can't apply it. That's why it works better. Excellent. And if I just perhaps comment a bit further on that as well, I mean, uh, I'm, I'm glad the, uh, the, the the students have found that. Uh, and that was a deliberate part of the, the teaching design. Um, we felt that some some aspects could be examined, but even even that we're reviewing for for future uh, cohorts. But but we thought that the main purpose of this program was to apply the knowledge, and and the only way you can apply the knowledge is applying it in real life scenarios or, or situations. And that came heavily from our industry steering committee. They all told us, and 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 they've heard our students have heard directly from the industry steering committee that they, you know, the graduates that they've taken in. They've always been generally quite disappointed uh, with the, the quality of the graduates, not because they don't have the knowledge, but because they don't know how to apply that knowledge and they don't know how to write succinctly or present to, to management. Um, and that's really been the focus. You know, we don't want to generate graduates who aren't, you know, quote unquote book smart or have all that knowledge in their head, but can't apply that knowledge in a real life scenario. What we're trying to develop are graduates who have that fundamental knowledge, but are more importantly can apply that or can develop scenarios and solutions. Because ultimately there are no really, in real life, there are no right and wrong answers. When you're developing a therapy, do you go with a particular viral vector? Do you go with a particular business plan or, 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 or manufacturing process? Or do you go with, you know, a different one? And, and you, there's no right or wrong answer, but there may be a better answer and perhaps a, a weaker answer or, or, or approach. And, and it's about understanding the pros and the cons and, and so on, and working through that. And that's really what we want. I mean, I've, I've, I've told the students that for, for one of the assessments they have coming up, um, which is for me, for me probably the most exciting assessment, which is their group all presentation. This is based on, um, they have to advise a company on, on a particular strategy. That assessment, it will change depending on, so they've got, I think almost two months to, to do it, but in between that, they'll be having live sessions uh, with a representative from the company, i.e. me, I'm one of my PhD students, but they'll be having live sessions where based on their advice, the company will take a particular approach and strategy. And then in two weeks time, they'll have another meeting to see the outcome of their decisions. So it's an actual dynamic live assessment uh, based on the input, because that's how life is. And, and I'm trying, and we've worked with that um, in, in it, with companies. Uh, and that's really what I wanna give that exposure to our students, that this is how real life works. You know, you, you give a, a potential idea, you go where you think about it, and then the company might implement it. And that has particular outcomes and you need to try and identify the best way forward. Um, okay, so we then have uh, another question. Actually, which... um, I've, I've seen this come up. Perhaps if I can praise this because I've, um, I've been following this one. It's a question about the backgrounds of the students who are coming onto your program. I think we've got quite a diverse range of people with backgrounds, but perhaps if you, if you could see, you could explain what background you need in yeah. terms of what, what you need to have established to be able to take part in the program. And then perhaps the students can talk about what it's like being in a program with people from different backgrounds and what you bring exactly yeah so I, I think that's an excellent way of doing it so just to give you an idea of the of the background we're looking for um so we've kept it generally quite broad uh, so we, we're, we're accepting students with a, a science background so for example uh in the traditionally in the biological sciences or the, or the chemical sciences so things like uh biomedical science biochemistry immunology virology um, uh, and so on, in addition to chemistry and, 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 and other similar courses, um, as well as engineering students. So students who come from perhaps chemical engineering or mechanical engineering, uh, or even uh, uh, computer science, because there's a huge need in this sector for data anal analysts and, uh, and, and so on. And that's something the students will be covering ironically next week in more detail. Um, and then in addition to that, uh, the focus around uh, those that come from a business background. Um, so if you look on the website, we've got some information there about uh, the, uh, the background of students. We're generally quite open um, and do you know drop an inquiry to me or, or to one of my colleagues um, if you are interested, I'm not sure about the, the fit, but generally we're quite open. And we also accept students 
uh, who perhaps have lower grades than they may have expected from their undergraduate program, but then have industrial experience. Um, and that's something that we're very keen because again, we feel like that industrial experience is very important from this sector. But I think it's probably better to hear from the students. Also, you will come from different backgrounds and you're working with individuals from different backgrounds. How have you found it? And do you feel that you need a strong science or engineering or commercial background for this course? Um, well, I think I came in to this course probably of everyone who's on the course now. I would have had the least amount of science or engineering based subjects based on my undergraduate degree. Um, I definitely don't feel like it's come against me. Um, so like it's an it's an understandable concern. It's a concern that I had before joining. Um, but I think definitely after today's webinar, don't let that be a concern that you continue to have. Um, and I think it's really nice just that everyone's come in from different backgrounds because you can share all your different perspectives. Um, someone who's maybe had more of a background in the commercial side of things will maybe be a bit stronger with that material at the start. Um, but yeah, it's it's just really nice to have a mix of everyone. Um, and yeah, don't don't let it be a concern, I think. I don't know if anyone else wants to jump in. Yeah, I would agree with Charlotte because I came from a biochemistry background as, as well. I was really worried that I wouldn't be able to cope very well with the manufacturing business. But I feel like all, all that really happens is that whatever your background is, it gives you a slight head start. But in the end, you come together and you're able to catch up with the other sides as well. Like you don't get left behind just because you don't have a strong background in one of the disciplines that the teaching. And, and I, I think I just want to yeah, just touch on that, because I think for me, it's indicative of real life. No one has the perfect skill set for a specific uh, role. Um, you know, there's always there's always learning that's required. And, and importantly, what we try to recreate to some extent, and I hope that we've managed to do this in some way for our students, is to be able to mimic what life would be like in a real life company industrial scenario and setting where you are often working with people with vastly different backgrounds. Um, generally, you know, scientists and engineers and, and maybe some of the, the commercial uh, individuals and so on. And that's something that we certainly want to try and mimic in terms of the cohort and the makeup. It really does, I think, enrich uh, the, the, the learning and, and the, 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 the assessments and so on as well. But for me, the assessments aren't designed, and I've said this to our students, you know, they're not designed to catch the students out or you know find a way to, to penalize them you know, if if there was a way to give everyone 100 percent if the work deserved it absolutely because we see that actually and I'm, I'm genuinely excited about this particular cohort that we have because we'll have to explain it to our external examiner why we've got so many high marks but for me it's because our students deserve it and 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 they've done a phenomenal job and they've really embraced that that kind of enrichment that they get from working with each other. And that is absolutely indicative of real life, especially in the cell and gene therapy field, you cannot develop solutions in isolation. And that includes companies. You know, Many companies are working together in a pre-competitive environment uh, because they realize that they don't have all the solutions and, and they, they can't invest in all of the solutions. So they're having to work with perhaps competitors to try and develop new technologies or new ways of thinking or working with the regulator to try and convince them of a particular solution scenario and approach. And that does require negotiation. It requires, you know, people skills and, and, and the skills that you can only get by working with other individuals. I'm sure at some point, if it hasn't happened already, there's going to be fallouts amongst the individuals within their groups or, you know, people not pulling their weight or people not, you know, understanding. And there's going to be, you know, things lost in translation. But in reality, that's part of life. And that happens all of the time. You know, we work with a number of collaborators. You know, many of our collaborators are fantastic, but there's been the odd one or two where things haven't, you know, gone as we would have liked for whatever reason and you have to manage that you have to deal with that because that's the reality of, of the world that we live in so that's what we want to try and um certainly uh, uh you know mimic uh moving forward um and then there's a question that i could potentially just just answer very briefly uh, around the msc class i've actually perhaps do you guys want to give an overview of the class size and how you found it so far and what is and then i can discuss what the class size might be for for future cohorts Yeah, so ahead, for, yeah. Uh, for us this year, I believe it's, it's between 12 and 15 of us, if I'm not mistaken. I think it, we're, we're, there's 15 of us this year, right? See? 16, 16. You, you're missing one. 16, all right. Yeah. So <laughs> there we go. So there's 16 of us. And um, no, honestly, I think it's a fantastic um, group size. 
um, when we have seminars together and um, the conversation really gets going, there's input from everyone. So the group isn't too big, it's not too small either. Um, and the group work um, and the group assignments means that you'll very quickly get to know everyone in those 16. Um, so no, I, I think it's, it's, the group size is great. I think it's one of the positives. I was worried that it'd be a bit too big, um, but um, I think it's just the right size, honestly. Yeah, and, and I think I think from our perspective, we're, we're trying to keep it around that number. I mean, for me, I think, I mean, as, as any university, they would want to get as many students as possible. But at UCL, we're very, um, we, we operate in a different model, in particular the department. And um, so our undergraduate program, we limit the size uh, between 40 and um, at, the at the most 60. So we had to take 60 last year because we had a, an over increase in offers because of COVID and, and all of the, the, the mess that we had over the summer in the UK. Um, but normally the class sizes are between 40 and 60 in our undergraduate graduate program and on this program we're really looking at no more than 20. Um, ideally we actually rejected a few last year because we want to keep the numbers manageable for our this is our first cohort um, and so we want to keep the numbers manageable and really we're looking at no more than 20 that may increase in, in a couple of years as there's more demand and, and we are experiencing lots of demand uh, for this program so we are being selective about who we take on um, but from our perspective, we want to get the best graduates who genuinely have that passion. For me, it's less about do you have the technical know-how when you join, because you will learn that. And, and if you have the drive, the enthusiasm and the, and the proactivity, you will do that in your own time and you will go the extra mile because you've got that, that drive. It's what you know, keeps you going. Whereas students who come in with a strong technical background but don't have that passion, for me, often make the worst uh, graduate or doctoral students and that's why I'm very when I choose doctoral students to in my research group I'm not basing it on technical competency in, in many cases it's based on that drive and that ability and that and that proactiveness and that just how keen and eager because when you're doing a research project or a PhD there are going to be many difficult days and it's about how do you have that passion to wake up every morning even when the data is not going the way you want and everything's you know the world seems to be crumbling how do you have that resilience and that's what we want to engender in our master's students as well um so from our perspective i would say certainly for next year we're not looking at any more than 20 then uh, again depends on numbers and we're still unsure about the whole covid situation but we're not looking at, at more than 20 um for next year um and we want to keep it to those sorts of numbers because that has a small class feel everyone gets to know each other. I think once you get beyond 30, you know, you really start to enter into territory where um, it becomes, uh, you start to lose that personal, personal touch. And I think that's been so important for our students this year. So there's one other question which I can perhaps answer. Um, and I know there's a few comments in the chat. Um, so, and I recognize we're, we're over time. So first I'd like to thank everyone for, 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 for their time and, and so on. Um, so there's a very quick question around the, um, uh, is there process modeling uh, in, in, this, in this course? Uh, there is going to be actually, so our students are gonna be introduced to that next week um, because we feel that's a critical part of the field. The students won't, we don't expect the students to become programmers at the end of this uh, and we don't want them to. Um, that's a whole different uh, course entirely, but the understanding the utilization and how it can be applied to advanced therapies is critical. Uh, so there is a focus on how that will be undertaken and, and Again, there, there will be um, the opportunity for students who want to specialize that in the future, you know, through engineering doctorate programs and, and so on as well. And um, we have a number of my colleagues who are experts in the whole digitalization, advanced analytics and, and data processing space as well. So um, the I think the other questions are more technical, uh, sorry, are more kind of administrative. Um, but what I'd like to do is perhaps hand it over to our students uh, for, for any final comments and thoughts. So, I mean, and perhaps I'll, I'll put it this way. So if you could go back in time, uh, back to when you were applying uh, and you had, uh, you know, but now knowing what you know about the program, what would be your genuine, sincere kind of advice and thoughts and input? A, would you, you know, still take the program and B, kind of what advice would you give to someone who's thinking about uh, taking this program? Um, let's start with, uh, let's go with Charlotte first. Um, I definitely 100% would still do the program. Um, I'm really loving it and that is definitely genuine. Um, I think for you guys, I would say the best thing you can do is just keep on reading about the industry, um, expose yourself to all the updates as much as you can. 
Um, I find LinkedIn is a really good way to keep up with industry updates. Sign up to any webinars or newsletters. Try and listen to as many podcasts as you can. Um, the, uh, the, what is it called? Um, Alliance for Regenerative Medicine has a really, really good YouTube page. Um, and what I really like about it is there's videos with different companies within the industry. Um, they're about 15 minutes long, so it isn't too long. And you can get a really nice insight into both the scientific and technical things that they're working on, um, as well as the commercial aspects. So yeah, I think just really try and expose yourself to industry updates and knowledge as much as you can. Perfect. Uh, let's go with uh, Pia. Go ahead, Pia. Yep, uh, same thing for me. No regrets at all. I mean, I'm I'm extremely happy where, with with the course and how it's going and everything. Um, yeah, maybe I would have tried and and um, find out what the the sector was talking about before. So, like Charlotte said, podcasts, newsletters are a great platform um, just to inform yourself a little bit um, before you write your cover letter or before you apply. Um, and yeah, that that's that for me. Thanks. Perfect. Uh, Lee, we'll go with you next. Yeah, um, so I felt like I came quite prepared because of my undergrad and also I came from the department. So I knew what to look forward to in terms of the department and I knew how great it's going to be. Uh, the one thing that I will suggest is to try and identify, I mean, I know if you come from a different background, you will kind of feel like you have some areas that you're more you're weaker at or you don't know enough about. Try and identify those and kind of read around them a little bit so you have some sort of familiarity with it. So when you come to the course, you're not completely shocked. Uh, also have a different state of mind. Come open-minded to take on a lot of information from a lot of different areas and don't just focus on what you know. It's just like that sort of approach can really help you when you get started and you get overwhelmed with a lot of information. Fantastic. And then finally, tomorrow. Yeah, I would agree with Leahy. I think if I was, I would definitely take the course again. But if I was restarting the course, then I probably would have, because I would have had much more time back then, I would have read textbooks on engineering or like more long term reading around the subject. Not because I couldn't do it without without that but just so it would feel easier to ease yourself into it and to already have a background knowledge so I would say that yeah fantastic um so I, I recognize we've gone over time so first I'd like to thank all of you for joining us uh, and for taking the time out to to hear about the program uh, but actually I'd like to um finish and, and close by most importantly thanking our students. I mean, they've spoken very positively about the program and I can assure you, I had no part to play in, in coercing them in any way, shape or form uh, beforehand, but really like to thank our students, not because of their comments uh, today, but because of their attitude, their input, their enthusiasm and their excitement and passion throughout the entire year. It has been an absolute pleasure uh, teaching this particular cohort. I couldn't have asked and, 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 and all of the teaching staff are unanimous in this and that we couldn't have asked for a better first cohort. And I think 2021, 2022's cohort is gonna have a, a very, very high standard uh, to, to, to meet and reach uh, to, to get anywhere close to our current cohort. So it's been an absolute pleasure teaching them and, and they've taken to it phenomenally well. We haven't done everything perfectly uh, and there's always things that we can improve on, but they've been extremely patient with us and have really taken to you know, really buying into the philosophy and the approach of what we want to deliver in order to get these therapies and these products and these outcomes to patients that need them, need them is going to take a monumental effort. But I genuinely believe that in the next five to 10 years, the individuals that you see on your screen right now, every single one of them, if they stay in this sector, which I hope they do and I expect they will, will be very much at the forefront of delivering that change and making this, uh, these therapies uh, uh, come to reality. And that for me is the most exciting legacy behind all of this. It doesn't matter you know, whether we get 100 students on this program or, or 10 students on this program. For me, it's about getting those students who in the next five to 10 years and beyond will be the ones that will you know, hopefully look back on this program and say, well, that was for me a turning point in my career that has now allowed me to achieve uh, these outcomes for patients and, and develop new products, new processes, and hopefully better outcomes for, for many in the future. So with that, I'd like to thank our students. Uh, it's been a pleasure having you join us. I know as well, it's, it's reading week this week, and I know you're ex all extremely busy because we've overloaded you a little, I think, with the assessments, but hopefully you're enjoying them. And this has been a good break 
in between all of the uh, the uh, the group meetings and, and so on as well. Uh, and I think it's nice to have that bit of a refresher as well. And it's great to see our students in in good spirits, um, uh, despite all of the, the work they're, they're doing at the moment. But we know that this work will have meaningful outputs uh, in the next uh, coming weeks and months and years. Uh, so I'd like to thank you all once again for your time. And if you have any questions um, about the program, do feel, reach, feel free to reach out to myself. Uh, and I'm sure uh, if, we're, if and when we can have face-to-face -face visits and so on, I'm sure if our students are still around at that point, we'll be happy to meet you in person as well. So with that, I'd like to thank you all uh, and thank you for your time. And uh, hopefully we'll see you uh, in, in the coming weeks, months and years. Thank you all. <laughs>